and I expect each of you to supply these men. We must rebuild what was lost at Ostagar, and quickly. There are those who would take advantage of our weakened state if we let them. We must defeat this Darkspawn incursion, but we must do so sensibly and without hesitation. Your Lordship, if I might speak. You have declared yourself Queen Anora's regent and claim we must unite under your banner for our own good. But what of the army lost at Ostagar? Your withdrawal was most... fortuitous. Everything I have done has been to secure Ferelden's independence. I have not shirked my duty to the throne, and neither will any of you! The Banorn will not bow to you simply because you demand it. Understand this. I will brook no threat to this nation from you or anyone. Bantegan, please! Your Majesty, your father risks civil war. If Eamon were here... Bantegan, my father is doing what is best. Did he also do what was best for your husband, Your Majesty? I think he was out there looking for you. He's chosen you. Mabari are like that. They call it imprinting. Does this mean we're going to have this mangy beast following us about now? Wonderful. He's not mangy. And yet we still have Alistair along. <coughs>
Wake up, gentlemen. More travelers to attend to. Led by a dwarf, oddly enough. Uh, they don't look much like their mothers. You know, uh, maybe we should just let these ones pass. Nonsense. Greetings, travelers. Highwaymen, preying on those fleeing the Darkspawn, I suppose. They are fools to get in our way. I say, teach them a lesson. Now, is that any way to greet someone? A simple ten silvers, and you're free to move on. What did I tell you? No wagons, and this one looks armed. The toll applies to everyone, Henrik. That's why it's a toll, and not, say, a refugee tax. Oh, right. Even if you're no refugee, you still got to pay. Well, I can't say I'm pleased to hear that. We have rules, you know. Right. We get to ransack your corpse, then. Those are the rules. <laughs> well, this is going nowhere. Let's finish this, gents. Surrender. We're, we're just trying to get by before the dog spawn get us all. Yes, yes, of, of course. We should have been more careful. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not going down without a fight. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there it is. Lothering. Pretty as a painting. Ah, so you have finally decided to rejoin us, have you? Falling on your blade in grief seemed like too much trouble, I take it. Is my being upset so hard to understand? Have you never lost someone important to you? Just what would you do if your mother died? Before or after I stopped laughing. Right, very creepy. Forget I asked. Yes, I know. I was just... thinking. No wonder it took so long, then. Oh, I get it. This is the part where we're shocked to discover how you've never had a friend your entire life. I can be friendly when I desire to. Alas, desiring to be more intelligent does not make it so. Anyway, I thought we should talk about where we intend to go first. I agree. Have you looked at them? There are three main groups that we have treaties for. The Dalish Elves, the Dwarves of Orzammar, and the Circle of Magi. I also still think that Arleman is our best bet for help. We might even want to go to him first. Well, I don't know where we should go. I'll do whatever you decide. Now that is unsurprising. Arleman is a good man, but I don't know for sure he's where we should go. I'm not going to fight about it. Short of leaving Ferelden to seek them out, the only place to send word to would be Weisalpt Fortress. And that's thousands of miles away. Fair enough. Let's head into the village whenever you're ready.
I have a wonder, Alistair. What do you need? Ask away. Same way you did. You drink some blood, you choke on it and pass out. You haven't forgotten already, have you? I do my best. <laughs> what can I say? Let's see, I was in the Chantry before. I trained for many years to become a Templar, in fact. That's where I learned most of my skills. You're telling me I was banished to the kitchens to scour the pots more times than I can count. And that's a lot. I, I can count pretty high. The Grand Cleric didn't want to let me go. Duncan was forced to conscript me, actually, and was she ever furious when he did? I thought she was going to have us both arrested. I was lucky. I wondered that myself. It's not as if she valued me highly. I think she just didn't want to give anything to the Grey Wardens, is all. The Chantry didn't lose much. And I think I can do more fighting the Blight anyhow, rather than sitting in a temple somewhere. I'll always be thankful to Duncan for recruiting me. If it hadn't been for him, you know, I would never... I wouldn't have. No, it's... Uh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be... It's fine. He died a hero. They all did. Come on, let's go. I think I'm done talking. What do you wish of me? If you must. <laughs> well, that depends, does it not? What does she seem to be? You mean, is she truly the Flemeth of legend and story? Tell me, how much do you know of the tale? The one that the Chastened still tell of my mother, to frighten them into obedience. Ah, I see. That does explain much. I can relay what Flemeth once told me herself, and you can decide whether or not tis the truth, if you desire. As the tale is sung by the bards, there was a time when Flemeth was young and beautiful. A fair lass in a land of barbarian men, the desire of any who saw her. Many centuries before this land was even named Ferelden. The tales say that Flemeth fell in love with Osin the Bard and fled the castle of her husband, the dread Lord Conobar, and that he swore vengeance for her infidelity. In truth, my mother claims that twas Osin who was her husband, and Conobar the jealous Lord who looked on from afar. Lord Conobar approached young Osin and offered him wealth and power in exchange for his lovely wife, and Osin agreed. The life of a bard is a poor one, and love fades in the wake of hunger. Twas Flemeth who suggested the arrangement. All would have been well had Lord Conobar kept his end of the bargain. But he was a foul man who bargained with coin he did not possess. Osen was led off to a field and slain, left for dead. Flemeth spoke to the spirits and learned of the deed, and swore revenge. That was not the point. Conobar had no honor, so she would not have him. Flemeth begged the spirits to aid her, and was they who slew Conobar. The demon the legend tells of came later. Lord Conobar's allies chased Flemeth, you see. Chased her to the wilds, and there she hid. There she found the demon, and he made her strong. The legends all speak of the great hero Cormac, he who defeated Flemeth and her great army when she invaded the lowlands centuries later. All lies. The truth of the matter is that there was never an invasion. As Flemeth tells it, the Chastened never raised an army under her banner and she never fought with any warrior named Cormac. 
Cormac led a brutal civil war against his own people and later claimed it was to vanquish evil that had taken root amongst the lords. Thus, he was hailed a hero. Flemeth was only attached to the legend much later. Perhaps it was due to the great war with the chastened that eventually came, but Mother claims not to know how it began. You ask if I have sisters. I have asked of this myself. The stories tell of many witches of the wilds after all, not just the one. And these tales existed long before I did. Flemeth refuses to speak of other daughters, if they existed. So should I believe I am her first? I doubt that too. The Chastened tell of a falling out between Flemeth and her daughters. They say that one day she hunted them all through the wilds and ate their hearts. It may be true. I have never seen another witch or heard of one. Perhaps one day Flemeth will eat my heart as well. The demon within her has transformed her into something else. An abomination, perhaps, some would say. I know not. I only know my mother is clever, and she is part of the wilds as it is part of her. But she is no immortal. She bleeds. A blade in her heart would kill her like any other, were it lucky enough to find her. Flemeth tells it with far more embellishment than I, but you are welcome. Dare I ask of your own mother? Few are abominations of legend, tis true, but I find myself curious nevertheless. Ah, then you have my sympathies for what it is worth. Which is very little, I am certain. It matters not. Let us move on. Safe shelter, I'll warn you. Move on if you can. Lothering's lost. Thieves prey on the unfortunate whenever they get the chance. We've had refugees streaming from the south for the last two days. The Chantry and Tavern are full to bursting. There simply isn't enough food to go around, and we Templars can barely keep order. You'd be better off elsewhere, my friend. I'm just warning you, things may not be as hospitable as you would expect. People are frightened. The ban has marched north with Tern Loghain, so Lothering's on its own. Most folks look to Elder Miriam. Otherwise, you could speak to Sir Bryant in the Chantry, I suppose. It's up to you. It's just a guess, but I'm thinking everyone in Lothering is aware of the approaching Darkspawn Horde. I shall do it. Have you seen my mother? She's really tall, and she has red hair. We live on a big farm hold, all of us. Some mean men with swords came. A mother told me to run to the village as fast as I could, so I did. She said she'd be right behind me, but I've been waiting and waiting and I can't see her. She'll come soon, right? She wouldn't leave me here all alone. Mother, where are you? Just how smart are Mabari supposed to be, anyway? Do you think they understand everything we say? Oh, is that so? You could just be listening to the tone of my voice. You could be an utter moron, for all we know. Uh... Hey, 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 now! <laughs> There's nothing saying that a moron can't be cute and adorable. Who's the cute and adorable puppy? Ignorance is bliss, isn't it? That's what the Chantry kept telling me, anyhow. Hello, uh, stranger. 
I don't suppose you know anyone that can make traps? Old man Barlin said that Darkspawn may be coming soon. He's got traps on his farm. I figured I'd put a few on my lands. Barlin wants to poison his traps. I just want normal traps. Ah, oh, he doesn't have any poison yet, thank the Maker. So his fields are just full of traps. He can be a bit eccentric. None to be had. Balin has all the traps in the village in his fields. I, I didn't mean to bother you. Sorry. How dare you accuse me of thievery? You got a bed for the night. You taken care of. <laughs> hmm. You look better armed than most refugees that come through. Not implying you're a deserter or the like. I'll trust you can take care of yourself. Ever since Good King Kaelin passed, refugees and soldiers have been passing through. I'm the Elder here, and I've my hands full making sure refugees don't turn to petty theft, or worse. <coughs> Sir Bryant at the Chantry is seeing to matters of defense and such. He'd have more of an ear for your type. Your eyes are in it it shall be done. Too much to do, and not enough time. I don't suppose you know anything of tonics, medicines, or herbs. Then you may be able to do us a lot of good. All manner of travelers come through, many injured or sick. We do our best, but we're out of supplies. There's medicinal herbs in the woods to the north. If you make a few poultices, I'll scrape together some sort of payment. I'll write all you need to know in this note here. Enough. People here are already desperate to strike. Don't need to coming to blows. But what about my food? I said enough. You aren't one of my captors. I have nothing to say that would amuse a dwarf. Leave me in peace. I'm in a cage, am I not? I've been placed here by the Chantry. I am Sten of the Beresad, the vanguard of the Kunari peoples. I have been convicted of murder. Have the villagers not spoken of this? The people of a farm hold. Eight humans, in addition to the children. There is no difficulty in capturing prey that surrenders. I waited for several days until the knights arrived. Because I wished to. Either you have an enviable memory or a pitiable life to know nothing of regret. Twenty days now. I shouldn't last much longer, another week at most. Compared to your kind, maybe. Death will be my atonement. I would prefer to die in battle, but my choices have been made. The Blight. Are you a Grey Warden, then? Surprising. My people have heard legends of the Grey Warden's strength and skill. Though I suppose not every legend is true. Perhaps if you told her the Grey Wardens need my assistance, it seems as likely to bring my death as waiting here. Farewell, then. A penitent man left to be torn to pieces by Darkspawn. Tis a fine example of the Chantry's mercy, is it not?
You aren't one of my captors. I have nothing to say that would amuse a dwarf. Leave me. I am Sten of the Beresad, the Vanguard. I have been convicted of murder. However I feel, whatever I've done, my life is for... Death will be my atonement. Perhaps. The Blight. My people have heard legends of the Grey... Perhaps if you talk...
with you, foul creatures! Leave us alone! As you... Mighty timely arrival there, my friend. I'm much obliged. You want a reward, eh? I suppose that's an entirely reasonable request. How does a hundred silver sound? I was going to use that to fix up the cart, but uh, quite frankly, I'll be grateful enough that my son and I come out of this with our heads. <laughs> Then I suppose we're doubly fortunate, aren't we? The name's Bodon Fedek, merchant and entrepreneur. This here is my son, Sandal. Say hello, my boy. Hello. Road's been mighty dangerous these days. Mind if I ask what brings you out here? Perhaps we're going the same way. Grey wounds. Hmm. My, that does rather explain a lot. No offence, but I suspect... There's more excitement on your path than my boy and I can handle. Allow me to bid you farewell and good fortune, though. Goodbye. Now then, let's get this mess cleaned up, shall we? We'll be off as soon as this mess is cleaned up. Thank you kindly for all your assistance. dreams, huh? Drank more like, as in the tainted blood, remember? You see, part of being a Grey Warden is being able to hear the Darkspawn. That's what your dream was, hearing them. The Archdemon, it talks to the Horde, and we feel it just as they do. That's why we know this is really a blight. He did. He said he felt the Archdemon's presence. Everyone just assumed he was guessing. It takes a bit, but eventually you can block the dreams out. Some of the older Grey Wardens say they can understand the Archdemon a bit, but I sure can't. Anyhow, when I heard you thrashing around, I thought I should tell you. It was scary at first for me, too. I screamed like a little girl. Duncan said he thought I had someone in my room. <laughs> Not embarrassing at all. Anyhow, you're up now, right? Let's pull up camp and get a move on. <laughs> 